Hello and welcome to a presentation about mindfulness in schools. My name is Robert Echinger and I teach religion, ethics and personal development in a public school in Vienna. I will tell you about little exercises I'm doing with my students and you can use this for yourself and for your students too. And I hope that this can be a little contribution for discovering sustainable mindset. How can we educate the mind and the heart in a way that we become able to make better decisions for ourselves and for others? My school has been trying to integrate mindfulness for some years now and I'm happy to show you some of the ideas we are working on. Here you can see me surrounded by a bunch of colleagues who share my passion for these kinds of ideas. So the question is why mindfulness? Science tells us that we are all connected. But if we are honest, we often do not feel connected at all. We feel disconnected, lonely and isolated very much. And I think it's about not being connected to ourselves in the first place. So the idea is to connect with ourselves, with our bodies, our sensations, our emotions, our thoughts, our needs in connecting with the experience of the present moment. We can learn how to connect with others and take care of others in a better way too. Of course, this is not a quick fix. It's not an immediate solution for all the problems we have in our lives, in our families, in our world. But I think it's going to the roots, to the roots of the problems. And it's, it's a wise approach to plant better seeds, to yield better fruits in the future. The idea of mindfulness is simple. It's about being in the present, in the present moment, in the here and now. And it sounds really simple. But it is not so easy because our mind has the tendency to go into the future or connect with the past or the time. And it's important to notice that this ability of the mind to do this is great and precious and we should not lose it, but it's about balance. We are too much in the future and in the past, too much distracted and confused. We are worrying too much. We are planning too much. So it's about learning to keep this, this subtle balance. And because it's not easy, it takes practice. And this kind of practice I'm trying to bring into my classroom. And I will show you how I'm trying to do that. Some years ago, a mindfulness teacher, Maria Kluge from Osterloh in Germany, gave me a present, an hourglass, something like this. If you turn it around, you can measure one minute. So I got used to do a little ritual with my students. At the beginning of every lesson, we take one minute to practice mindfulness or similar exercises. It is always about connecting or reconnecting to ourselves and to others. And I will show you some examples how we do this. How can we create a good atmosphere in our classrooms? I noticed that many of my students are very distracted and very much out of balance. 
So the challenge is to create a surrounding that allows myself and my students to find a moment of peace or relaxation without falling asleep. Because it's very much about the students and because we are doing this together, I added here some pictures from the lessons we did together, some moments from the classroom. The idea is to bring peace into the world, one person at a time. So we try to start with ourselves. In the background, we have to trust, learn to be in peace with ourselves. We can step by step learn to be peaceful with other persons too. Maybe in the end, we can even learn to be in a peaceful way with our mother. Let's talk about the OK zone. I love this concept from the C learning curriculum because my students understand it immediately. We start with the knowledge about our nervous system. Our nervous system has its own way of being in balance and reacting to certain circumstances. And if we look at our state during the day, we can notice that mostly we are okay, hopefully. But sometimes we are in a low zone. There is too little energy. We are sad or tired, depressed or not motivated. And sometimes there is too much energy. We want to jump around or we are aggressive irritated or there is pain. When I introduced this idea of the OK zone to a certain class, one student raised her head and told me, yes, I know this perfectly. And I always go from the high zone to the low zone immediately or from the low zone into the high zone. So her observation was that she kind of misses the middle part, the OK zone. I hope that it's not like that for everyone, but maybe everybody can connect to this experience of feeling out of balance, being beside oneself sometimes. And here comes the idea of these mindful moments we are doing together in our classroom. It's about coming back into the OK zone again and again and again. But the first step is always noticing where am I now? Am I in the OK zone now? Or is there some kind of stress or am I tired? And how can I move in the right direction into the middle, into the resilient, into the OK zone? And it's also helpful to watch other people and to notice if they are in their resilience zone, because maybe we can find a way to help them to regulate themselves. Let's sum it up. Mindfulness establishes a deeper connection with ourselves and others. Practicing it helps to be present and find more balance. Even brief moments can make a big difference for our well-being. And mindfulness helps students to better cope with their life's challenges. Finally, the OK Zone provides a framework to recognize and return to emotional balance.